I will give you some introductory remarks on what the 2001 Convention actually regulates in terms of site protection. This meeting here has been organized basically with a background thought that we need to more promote what the Convention actually contains in terms of provisions on site protection. The Convention is very comprehensive. It addresses pillaging, commercial exploitation, and these kind of destructive actions that we will talk about. But of course, it also speaks about uh, ethic principles and uh, much wider issues of uh, scientific underwater ecology. This meeting here today is on site protection against human intervention. And the convention is very strict about it, uh, especially because it's actually one of its main aims. When you read the convention, what it says about what the objective of the, of the convention is, it's to strengthen the protection of the underwater culture heritage. Taking into account, when you read the preamble, taking into account how fragile this heritage is, how little it is yet known, and so much to, like, left open to intervention by pillagers, by commercial exploitation, and yet so little protected. So there was a strong wish uh, in the years uh, running up to 2001 to improve this situation. And that was why the convention was made. It was the first concern to say we have to increase the protection of the underwater culture heritage. What is the situation? It's still you know, very much the situation it was, even if we have seen a lot of improvement over the last 15 years. There is an extensive pillaging of underwater culture heritage. I would have loved to give you your numbers, but it's very difficult to give uh, statistics on something that is taking place so widely. We will have uh, experts later that will talk exactly about the cases to illustrate uh, how big the issue is, but there is for the moment a very wide pillaging of underwater culture heritage. And uh, there's also a, still a very a strong commercial exploitation. It makes this difference between pillaging and commercial exploitation. Pillage is against the law, while commercial exploitation takes uh, place in the framework of the law, either with an authorization or that is just not forbidden. Uh, and we have, of course, also a very wide traffic of the artifacts. So uh, the convention is very clear about it. It's not only about taking the first artifacts, it's also going further into what you do afterwards with it and the trafficking. So I really want to insist uh, here in this uh, short presentation on uh, these provisions of the convention of what it actually says. The challenge that we have is <coughs> This destruction that I just mentioned is still largely unnoticed by the public or even applauded by the public and seen as something positive. Hooray, someone found a treasure. And there's not yet this notice, oh God, they have taken something from us. Uh, museums and art markets have to become much more aware. Uh, we have in our work in the uh, recent years seen very often the reaction from museums that the treasure hunting was certainly fantastically done. Or even, you know, you find this still on museum websites, uh, how fantastically this commercial exploitation went on. And when you go into the details, you're shocked what actually took place. And I've seen with my own eyes uh, the actual situation and what afterwards was presented to the public as being the situation of a wonderful scientific excavation while it was actually a slaughter and a massacre. Uh, you know that it's still an issue to get this convention ratified universally. I see uh, with pleasure that we have uh, delegations in, in the room and ambassadors in the room. So I can only call on you, please, if your countries have not yet ratified the convention, please take at heart what the experts uh, will later tell you. You really need a wide legal protection of underwater culture heritage through the 2001 convention. And of course, we have to implement it. Domestic law has to be adapted and has to prohibit pillaging, has to prohibit commercial exploitation. Um, we also need to act much stronger on in international waters. We had several cases just recently in the last year where things have been taken in borders, maybe international, maybe not, no one knows actually where it really comes from. If there's no legal protection, if there's no cooperation by the states to really lock the hands and say like, we all protect underwater culture heritage, this will not be successful. We have to work together. And we need a much more stronger political approach to seizure. You know that there is, the 2001 convention is set in the framework of the international law of the sea, in the framework of UNCLOS. That's why you find some provisions quite lengthily fitting itself into this context. I just wanted to make it very clear the convention has done all this effort, all the convention drafters have done the ex uh, effort, and we have uh, the person with us who actually helped it adopt, um, to have done every effort to make it fit into the uh, law of the sea framework, and it's completely uh, uh, in harmony with UNCLOS. 
The content of the convention, you know, know this is ethical principles, strong site protection measures, a state cooperation mechanism, and scientific guidelines. I will insist here in this today uh, on the strong site protection measures. What does the convention actually say about what states promise to do to protect underwater cultural heritage better? There is a general site protection provision. All states that have ratified the convention promise to preserve underwater cultural heritage and to do their best, of course, within the limits of their capabilities. I draw your attention, it's not a, I'm, they might, it's a, they must do everything in their might to better protect the underwater cultural heritage. And they have to take the suitable measures. What are suitable measures? And I please encourage you to talk uh, these two days with us about how those measures can be taken. Creation of inventories of sites. If a state doesn't know where the underwater culture heritage is laying, how do you want to protect it? We have to see where is our heritage, actually. The control and surveillance of these sites. Once you know where they are, or even have a good suspicion where they are, you also have to take measures to control and survey these sites. We have uh, experts here with us from uh, the several, uh, several surveillance services that will tell you that this actually everything is possible. You just have to do your best to protect the sites and survey, and you will be able to do so. There is also the possibility of satellite surveillance. There is a possibility of investigation of potential pillagers. There's also, of course, and very importantly so, the cooperation and uh, legal, international legal assistance uh, that you have as your possibilities. There's a, there's a lot of possibilities uh, and measures that you can uh, take to uh, better protect your underwater culture heritage, and that's what you have promised if you have ratified the convention to do, to better protect your underwater culture heritage. But the convention does not only say protect your sites, not only have an eye on what is lying under the water, also have an eye on what is already taken out and what is trafficked over the markets. So it has a, 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 prov a provision in Article 14 that the state's uh, parties shall take measures to prevent the entry into the territory, the dealing in or the possession of underwater culture heritage illicitly exported and or recovered where the recovery was contrary to this convention. Please read, it's recovered where the recovery was contrary to this convention. It doesn't say illegal. So if anything has been taken out in a commercial exploitation operation in another country, and it comes to your state that has already ratified the convention, you also have to prevent the entry. You also have to, to cease afterwards. And so this, there the convention is very strict and says, not only pillaging, also commercial exploitation of heritage is a real problem and we have to do something against it. And it not only says that this is now recently, it can also be uh, things that have been recovered 10 years ago, right? The non-use of areas under the jurisdiction of states' parties. And we have already had cases where ships full of treasure load came to a state party's port and have been arrested, right? I think of the, 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 the Luisa case. So we had these cases already. Those cases have to be much more often uh, seen and we have to much better monitor who comes to the ports, and not only to the ports, but also the airports, and who brings materials in, and the uh, ports can be closed, uh, the use of artificial islands and islands can be prohibited, and this has to be implemented. It's said in the convention that the state's parties shall take the measures, and not may take the measures. So you have an obligation, if you have already ratified, to implement this and to uh, monitor what is going on. Pillagers have to go to a port as well. They have to eat, they have to get fuel. So you have there a power to say no, even if you do your deeds in other countries and other waters, at least not with me and I will not help you. And this is really important because that is where you have power to prevent the pillaging and destruction of underwater culture heritage. Uh, measures relating to nationals and vessels. All states parties <coughs> promise also to control their nationals and the vessels flying their flag. And over those, they have the jurisdiction not only in the territorial waters, but in all waters. So you can also say, you are operating out there in the international waters, and I still forbid you to do it. And I still will uh, sanction you if you have pillaged materials out there, over there, in, uh, in the international waters. So that is a strong power that the states have, but there, is a will, there must be a will to actually implement this. And I think this is the best place here to sit in this meeting room and to think about this. Have we actually already done this? Have the states already uh, arrested a vessel flying their flag? Not only you know, coming from the state, but flying their flag. 
uh, that can come be a vessel from a completely different state, right? Uh, have you already done everything to prevent them from uh, uh, destroying underwater cultural heritage? And their international cooperation, of course, is crucial because you already have to know what's going on. Right? Sanctions, also, it's very important. If there is no sanctioning foreseen, I mean, you know, someone pillages 10 tons of underwater cultural heritage and you say 500 euro fine, no problem. I pay that and I take home the artifacts. That is not sufficient. You have to really uh, control. Is the sanction that is set in the national law uh, actually hard enough and uh, uh, dissuasive enough? And it's very important to set those sanctions and to adopt, adapt the national law. It's not enough to ratify the 2001 convention and say, now I have promised we will do everything wonderfully. You also have to put it into your national law. Otherwise, it does not uh, impact on the private persons in your territory. You have to set sanctions and to say, like, we uh, will hear this, put you, you know, uh, sanction you if you violate what the convention says, and we will put you into prison. And we had, uh, fortunately, uh, several cases last year where very heavy prison fines, um, uh, uh, punishments have been um, given. Also seizure. I think that is something we have tomorrow a workshop. We really have to speak about how artifacts can be seized, what are the challenges to seize artifacts that have been illicitly exported, illegally pillaged, or just commercially exploited, legally, with a permission, and they come with a permission and an expert certificate. Can, how can you seize these artifacts? How can you stop this? And is your national law already enough adapted to permit the seizure of these artifacts? And when you have seized them, what do you do with those artifacts? Where do you bring them? And if you bring them in the museum that actually was cooperating with the treasure hunter, is this a good idea? These kind of things. Right? So, I mean, I think there is a lot of work still here to be done and a lot to be done also uh, yet to permit the seizure of these artifacts. There's also the state cooperation me mechanism. The pur purpose of the state cooperation mechanism is to give you legal help. If you have a pillager in international waters, but you basically see it from the, from the coast, and you have just not the jurisdiction to arrest this person, that you have another state who has the jurisdiction and who helps you, gives you legal help. It's not creating new jurisdiction. It just gives you the legal help of the other state to be able to arrest this pillager who's, for instance, operating in your exclusive economic zone. So that is what the state cooperation mechanism is about. We still have to put this into place. It's not about inventorying uh, all the shipwrecks that are out there in, in the international waters. It's also not about uh, creating uh, us new powers. It's about cooperation. So have we collected the information of what is going on out there at sea? Have we shared this with the other states? And have we actually consulted together to work? It's a strong draw and it's, you, know, you can create so much interest in uh, cooperation in underwater cultural heritage sites if you reach out the hand to other states and say, let's consult how to protect together a shipwreck site. It's heritage that is uh, important for all of us, so let's work together and protect it together and whoever has the appropriate jurisdiction you know, helps other states with it to protect the site. And this is really important that we begin to better implement uh, this scheme. This was just a short overview over those provisions that are on-site protection in the 2001 Convention. I invite you to read those uh, uh, provisions again to understand how large this convention actually is. Uh, from the first discovery of uh, the site to the first hand put on the site, the pillaging, the commercial exploitation, up to the last trading on the international markets of underwater culture heritage, this convention covers it all and uh, gives you very strong means at hand to prevent in future the destruction of underwater culture heritage. Thank you so much.